welcome to my channel. My name is Erica, and today's video is going to be another collab with my Andy girl, Andy Does Stuff. Now, of course, I will have Andy's channel and her video linked in my description box. Andy recently hit a thousand subscribers. Yes, and she's continuing to grow, and I just love that. If you guys have not yet gone to Andy's channel and checked her out and subscribed, I highly recommend doing so. She is beautiful, she's talented, she's amazing. I just love her. Andy and I have done several collabs together and we've done three Mask Monday collabs that you guys really enjoyed. Uh, the first one was Let's Go to the Movies. The second one was 80s music and the third one was 90s music. I came up with a bunch of questions for us to answer for those videos. And uh, we got a lot of really positive feedback from those videos and we thought, you know what, let's keep this going for as long as we can. So this video is going to be a little bit different. Rather than doing a Mask Monday, we are going to be creating an eye look. And let me show you the palette that Andy sent me for me to use in this video today. This is the Pinky Rose Cosmetics 80s Baby Palette. And this will make sense when I tell you what the uh, subject matter of this collab is going to be. I think this is a beautiful 80s color story. And I did go on to Google and looked up some 80s eye looks. So I have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to be doing today uh, for my eye look. Uh, they're, they're pretty blue heavy. So this shade right here called Dreamer is going to be, I think, the star of the show. Like basically take out my entire lid and then I'm going to pop some purples on my lid. But we'll just see how it all uh, comes out. Really excited to try this palette and really happy that Andy sent it to me. And we are going to be doing a collab based on 80s pop culture. I came up with a bunch of questions for us to answer while we put our eye looks together. Uh, it's a little different format than what I've done in the past. Uh, these are more rapid fire type questions. Uh, I, I did write all these down, finally sent the questions to Andy. I mean, we've had this plan for a couple of months at least, and I think I just sent her the questions like a week and a half ago. <laughs> it took me forever. Uh, so I, I do know what the questions are, but I haven't looked at these in quite a while. So uh, yeah, I think this is going to be really fun for us to do this together. Really excited to go watch Andy's video, uh, listen to her answers to these questions, and also, of course, watch her makeup look come together. So if you guys are ready to listen to my answers to the 80s pop culture questions I came up with and see my look come together using the Pinky Rose Cosmetics 80s Baby Palette for my collab with Andy, then please sit back, relax, and let's get started. Alrighty, let's get started with this 80s pop culture collab with my Andy girl. Now, of course, my brows are done and both eyelids are primed in the P. Louise eyeshadow base in Rumor 01. I'm going to be doing both eyes today on camera using the 80s Baby Pinky Rose Cosmetics Palette. And I saw a lot of looks on Google, 80s looks, that were very purple and blue and very pretty bright and bold. So I'm going to be using this shade here called The Baby in my transition area. I think I might blend that out a little bit with this one called Care Bear. So cute. And then I'm going to be using this shade called Dreamer across my lid. So let's get started. And I will be answering some questions. Now, the, the first group of questions, there's 15. And it's, uh, what are your memories of the following 80s toys and games? Okay, so the first one is fashion plates. And if you guys are not familiar with fashion plates, I'm gonna try to find a picture of them and pop them up here because they were so much fun. Uh, they basically were like these tiles that you would put in this little like, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, this little like, I don't know, a tray, I guess. And then uh, you would basically make like uh, crayon rubbing. So you put a piece of paper down and then rub the crayon over the top of it. And there were different like heads and bodies and uh, torsos, or I guess bodies and torsos are the same thing, uh, and legs and shoes. And so you could create your own outfit for this person that you were putting, you know, creating uh, with this car crayon rubbing. And then what you could do is you could flip the uh, tile over and put like a pattern on the shirt or the skirt or the pair of pants. Like there was like paisleys, flowers, leaves, plaid. It was a really creative toy, you know, cause you could make whatever kind of outfit you wanted on this person. Uh, and they had like different heads with different hairdos and, and different uh, like, like arms positioned in different ways. It was so cool. I just loved it. And I had my fashion plate set Oh, for years. I mean, I had that thing. I think I got it like in the second grade. And I think I finally gave it away to my neighbor girl when I was like, I don't know, maybe in eighth grade. And I would take the little uh, people that I had made, <laughs> little fashion designs that I'd made, cut them out and hang them on my wall. Number two is Light Bright. Do you guys remember Light Brights? God, those were awesome. It was like this little, uh, I don't know how to describe it, like this little console 
or not a console, like this machine. I don't know how to describe things, but uh, there was a light inside of it. And then there was the screen that went over the top of it that had these little holes, like peg holes. And then you would take a black piece of paper and pop these colored pegs through the paper and then obviously turn the light on and it would light up. It was so fun. And the game or the toy, whatever, came with templates that you could use. So you could make like, I don't know, a tree, a clown. Uh, I think there was like a witch. I mean, there's all kinds of really cool things you could make with that. And then, or you could just put in a blank piece of black paper and make whatever design you wanted. And I used to love to do that. And I got my kids light brights too. And they loved, they loved that. And I do remember though, I would step on those little light bright pegs forever. And that does not feel very good. <laughs> Number three, Barbies. I had a ton of Barbies and I gave them all away. When I was uh, in the eighth grade, going into my freshman year of high school, we moved to a different house. And my mom was like, you know, let, let's try to cut down on the clutter. So I, I want you to get rid of some of your toys that you're not playing with anymore. And I was too cool for Barbies at that point. Actually, I really wasn't too cool for Barbies. I was secretly still playing with Barbies in the eighth grade. <laughs> but uh, I did give them all away to my neighbor girl. And I'm so bummed that I did that because I could have given those to my daughter. My daughter loved Barbies. And the amount of money that I spent on her uh, for her own Barbies was a little ridiculous. Uh, although they did have some fancier, more newfangled type Barbies by the time she came around. But uh, I had Barbie clothes, tons of Barbie clothes. Uh, my neighbor would make clothes for my Barbies, which was so cool. I had the Barbie house that was like three stories. I had a little elevator that you would pull up. So fun. I had a shopping mall for my Barbies. I had a Jeep. I had a hair salon. I mean, I was all into Barbies. My mom went berserk buying me stuff for my Barbies. Okay, I think I'm good with that shade. Boy, that is a bright magenta shade. And I think what I'll do now is go around the edge of that with Care Bear, just kind of blend that out just a little bit. Uh, number four, Cabbage Patch Dolls. Yes, I had five, no, six Cabbage Patch Dolls. I had two twin boys, uh, two, two girls, and then a preemie baby, a little girl, little preemie <laughs> baby Cabbage Patch Doll. And then I also had a Cabbage Patch Kusa. Do you guys remember those? They were those uh, kind of, I don't know, they were animals, but mine was like a morph between a cat and a dog. <laughs> I had tons of Cabbage Patch doll clothes. Uh, and I wish I'd saved those too, got rid of those. I think I got rid of those when I went to college. I just thought I don't need my Cabbage Patch dolls anymore. I mean, I really didn't, but man, I really wish I'd saved them because they were so cute and I played with those things constantly. And I remember the preemie one, uh, her name was Ida Carolina. They had the funniest names. Uh, she smelled like baby powder. I love that about her. I just loved, I loved my Cabbage Patch dolls so much. Pound puppies. I loved pound puppies. I had one, uh, her name was Maxine, which that's all you really need is one. But of course I wanted 5,000 of them. Uh, her name was Maxine and I just loved her. She was gray and soft and cuddly. And I do remember that they came out with a Pound Puppies cartoon at one point, and that was really fun. Care Bears. Do you guys remember Care Bears? <laughs> uh, I had the Friendship Bear, I think. The pink one with the rainbow on its tummy. Pretty sure that was Friendship Bear. And I do remember watching the Care Bears movies. I think there's two of those, part one and part two, I'm pretty sure. Loved the Care Bears. And then uh, I did get my kids Care Bears, of course, because they kind of came back around again. I got my son the green one. I think that was Lucky Bear or Luck or Good Charm or Lucky Charm, something like that. And then my daughter, I think I got her the Friendship Bear one too. She had the pink one too. Tinker Toys. Ah, oh, I loved Tinker Toys. Those are those wooden toys that had like the round like disc things and then the long sticks. I can remember making um, the Ferris wheel with my Tinker Toys. So much fun. My mom finally made me get rid of the Tinker Toys because my friends and I would use the sticks as swords. She was like, if you guys don't stop beating each other up with Tinker Toy sticks, you're going to be wearing them. My Little Pony. <sighs> Loved My Little Pony. I had a bunch of the little like plastic My Little Ponies or rubber. I think they were plastic. Uh, tons of those. And then I also had, they made stuffed animal My Little Ponies that were kind of big. Uh, well, I mean, they were like medium sized stuffed animals. Loved my stuffed animal, uh, My Little Pony. Her name was Cotton Candy. And oh, I loved her. She was pink and had beautiful hair that I used to play with or brush and braid, put little clips in it. Oh, fun. Okay, I think I'm good with both those shades. That looks a little funky, but it's it's okay. You know, we're going for an 80s look. 80s looks got a little funky sometimes. So I think I'll put this shade down across both lids now.
Teddy Ruxpin. Do you guys remember Teddy Ruxpin, that bear that would talk? I never had a Teddy Ruxpin. My cousin had a Teddy Ruxpin and I loved playing with it. Like it would tell stories and stuff and it would kind of like talk to you. But it kind of, honestly, it kind of freaked me out a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Shrinky Dinks. Oh, those were fun. You basically would color these pictures that were on like, what, what were those even made out of? I can't even remember what they were made out of, but you would color the picture. They were like kind of almost like um, plasticky feeling. You'd color them and then put them in the oven and they would shrink and they would be hard and you could like pop a hole in them and like hang them in the window. That's what I used to do with my shrinky dinks. Uh, ooh, this is a pretty shade. Very pretty. Yeah, I love it. This is going to go across my entire lid, both lids. Uh, but I made so many little shrinky dinks when I was a kid, tons of those. The slinky, oh man, I used to take my slinky up to the top of my stairs <laughs> and let it go down the stairs. Well, actually that was at my grandparents' house. I didn't have stairs in my house when I was growing up, but at my grandparents' house, they had stairs and my cousins and I would race our slinkies. Oh, that was so fun. And inevitably it would always get all tangled up and wouldn't work anymore because I would, you know, mess around with it too much, but oh, love slinkies. I got my kids slinkies too. I got them actually, I think I got them the plastic slinkies and those lasted maybe a little bit better than the metal ones did. The operation game. That game was one of my favorites. Although I don't think I ever pulled one of his bones or organs out without it buzzing and like scaring the crap out of me. I mean, I'd be like, shake my hand, I'd be shaking with a little tweezers to pull out his little, you know, elbow bone or ankle bone or leg bone or whatever it was. And then his little nose would light up whenever you would touch the sides. And I would, I don't think I ever pulled anything out of that thing without setting it off. Monopoly, loved Monopoly, although I was not very good at it. And I actually would kind of lose interest in it after a while because, you know, sometimes it would take forever to get through the Monopoly game. Uh, and I did get my kids the Monopoly game and I can remember digging m uh, Monopoly money out of all of their stuff for years. Like, you know, I'd be cleaning out their sock drawer and here's like a big pile of Monopoly money. That stuff went everywhere. But that was a really fun game, really, really fun with the different uh, pieces to the game, you know, like the little thimble in the car and, and then all the hotels and, you know, you could get railroads and that was such a great, such a great game. Life was another game that I loved to play. Oh, that was so fun. I loved the car with the, the family that you could put in it. <laughs> that was so great. Such a fun board game. And then the last one here is Connect Four. Now my family and I uh, on the holidays and stuff like Christmas or Thanksgiving when we all get together, we still to this day play Connect Four. And I'm very competitive. So I like wanna kick everybody's butt when I play Connect Four. They're like, I don't wanna play with mom because she's gonna like make me cry by the end of this. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do my lower lash lines. I'm gonna put on some concealer here. This is the uh, Maybelline Instant Age Rewind that I use all the time. Figured I'd go ahead and do this on camera today because I'm afraid I'm gonna end up getting done with my look before I'm done answering these questions. The next group of questions is what were your favorite things? And I came up with, what is, how many are there? 15, again, 15 favorite things. So uh, number one is what was your favorite 80s perfume? And that would be Love's Baby Soft. And also exclamation. I loved both of those. I've been trying to find Love's Baby Soft somewhere. I don't think they make it anymore. But if I ever find that, I'm going to grab 9,000 bottles of it because oh, I love the smell of that. That was such a great perfume. Uh, let's see. Game Show. Price is right. Love the Price is right. I still love it. You know, I don't watch it anymore because we don't have cable. Is that even on anymore? I'm sure it still is. It's got to be still on, right? But uh, loved Bob Barker. I wanted to be a Barker's beauty my whole life. Uh, number three, family pastime. Uh, going to the drive-in. That was something that we did a lot as a family was going to drive-in uh, movies or the drive-in theater. Loved doing that. That was really fun. Really a great memory of my childhood was going to the drive-in. Uh, number four, TV show Heartthrob. <sighs> I would say probably Kirk Cameron. I loved him from Growing Pains. Oh, he was so cute. Uh, I also loved Rob Lowe. I've mentioned that before in other videos. Loved him too. Now I'm going to go into the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in, what is this, Prance? Yes, Prance, and put that in my lower lash lines. This is not the same blue as what's on the lid, but I'm going to stick with it because that's just what I'm going to do. Okay, uh, let's see. Movie star. My favorite movie star in the 80s was probably Carrie Fisher, Princess Leia. I just thought she was so cool, so badass, and I loved Star Wars. Loved Star Wars so much. TV sitcom, The Golden Girls. Absolutely. I own every single season of that show on DVD. 
and I love to watch it. I haven't watched it in a long time, and now I'm thinking, you know what? I might need to do a Golden Girls marathon this coming weekend. That might be really fun, and this is going to come out of here. Well, slow down there, Prance. Oh, this must have broken. Dang it. Uh, let's see. Clothing brand. I was really into Mr. Rags. We had uh, a store that sold Mr. Rags sweatshirts here, and I just loved my Mr. Rags sweatshirts. And also... Um, Esprit. I would wear Esprit t-shirts and sweatshirts. And then uh, Normandy Rose jeans were like the cool jeans. They had like this uh, pink embroidered rose on the pockets. Oh, I thought I was so fancy with that. Activity with friends. I mean, we would do all kinds of stuff, but I I'd probably play with Barbies. I mean, you know, in, the, in grade school, even in the middle school, my friends and I sometimes would play with our Barbies or with our Cabbage Patch dolls. Uh, also riding our bikes to the local like little store, like the little convenience store. My mom would give us like a dollar a piece and we would just ride down to the store and get tons of candy. You can't even get any candy, I don't think, with a dollar anymore. Family TV show. That would have been uh, Family Ties. I had such a crush on Michael J. Fox. He, he might have been my TV heartthrob actually. Yeah, maybe, because I, I really love Michael J. Fox. And I loved Justine Bateman. I thought she was super cool too. I wanted to be Mallory, even though she's kind of a ding dong. I just loved that show. Uh, Saturday morning cartoon. I loved Captain Caveman. He was my favorite. And there was also uh, the Pac-Man. There was a Pac-Man cartoon that I loved. And of course I loved the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner show. That was great. So now I'm gonna go into this shade right here. Well, I don't know. Yeah, let's go ahead. I'm going to put this shade across the lower lash line and then I'm going to uh, deepen it up with this black shade. Let me grab a brush. Uh, my favorite fast food restaurant in the 80s was Dairy Queen. I still love Dairy Queen, although I haven't had Dairy Queen in a really long time. Uh, but yeah, we would go to Dairy Queen all the time. We would either ride our bikes to Dairy Queen or walk or whatever, but yeah, loved Dairy Queen. And uh, I also like McDonald's too, but I don't like onions. And every single time I would order a uh, hamburger from McDonald's, it would come with onions on it. I'd freak out. Hated that. Uh, makeup brand in the 80s. I would have to say Wet n Wild. I mean, I wore CoverGirl and stuff too, but I would say Wet n Wild because that's when I got really into that purple lipstick that was kind of this color purple. A little bit, well, it was kind of a mixture of these two together. And my mom hated that lipstick. She'd get so mad at me. She's like, do you have to wear that? I'm like, yeah, I do. All my friends are wearing it. I'm wearing it. And I mean, I was like 13, 14. So, you know, it wasn't like I was nine wearing bright purple lipstick, but loved Wet n Wild. Uh, my favorite outfit, uh, probably my Normandy Rose jeans and an Esprit t-shirt or sweatshirt. I had like these short sleeve little sweatshirts that said Esprit across the front of it. And I thought I was just downtown Freddie Brown in that outfit. Vacation spot, uh, the Oregon coast. That's typically where we would go for vacation when, in the 80s when I was growing up. We would stay at this place called Driftwood Shores, which is gorgeous. And uh, they've actually redone Driftwood Shores and it's even prettier now. Okay, so now that I got that laid down, there's no way I'm going to leave that because I don't like pink on my lower lash line. So let's go into Fuerte, this is called, and put that uh, kind of just on the outer part of the lower lash line, I think. And the last question here is my favorite pair of shoes. And I had Keds, tons of different pairs of Keds in all different colors. I actually had a jungle print pair of Keds that I loved. And then also jelly shoes. Those were amazing. Uh, I would wear mine with socks sometimes, <laughs> total dork. And then when I would wear them barefoot, uh, you know, I'd walk to school and home from school and all that stuff where all day. And when you take those shoes off, they were filthy. I mean, there was like little rivulets of mud from the bottom of your shoes and those. God, that was so gross. Ugh, gross. Now, the next set of questions, there's 15, and it's just, do, did you have one of these things? So I'm going to try to go through this a little bit more quickly here. <laughs> the first one is Walkman. Yes, I did have a Walkman. I had a couple Walkmans, actually, because I would use mine so much that I would break them. You know, like I'd just put them in my backpack or, I don't know, carry them around with me and, you know, drop it or whatever. <laughs> But I had a couple different Walkmans. And then uh, when I was in high school, I got a CD Walkman. That was in the 90s, but that, that was really cool. But I loved my Walkmans. I would, you know, make mixed tapes for myself or like my friends would make me mix, mix mixed tapes bleh, and uh, just would rock out. And I had some really cool headphones. I thought I was really badass. Let's see, Trapper Keeper. I did have a Trapper Keeper. I had one with a unicorn on the front. Those were like, you know, your folders for school. 
Oh man, I thought it was so cool. And they had like a pencil pouch in there and all kinds of cool stuff. Peachy folders. Those were so fun. They were like these kind of, I don't know, yellowy brown peachy folders that you'd put your papers from school in. And they had designs of people playing sports on the front of them. And my friends and I, we would uh, write messages to each other on the top of our peachies <laughs> or draw pictures. And sometimes some of the boys would draw some very inappropriate pictures on my peachies. And my mother's like, who drew this? I'm like, I, I don't know. Uh, she's like, well, yeah, that's not going back to school with you. You're going to throw that in the garbage. But I loved my peaches. Uh, let's see. Rubik's Cube. Had a Rubik's Cube. Never could uh, put it together. Like you see people do it and it's together. I could never do that. I would take mine apart <laughs> and put it back together so it, all, all the colors lined up. Or I, we would just take the stickers off. And then pretty soon the stickers wouldn't stick on it anymore. Uh, garbage Pail Kids stickers. Loved my Garbage Pail Kids stickers. I had a ton of them. Uh, it was, you know, kind of making fun of the, obviously the Cabbage Patch dolls, but those were great. And we would like trade them at school and, you know, like, do you have a Dirty Dan? Oh yeah, oh, I'll trade my Dirty Dan for your blah, blah, blah. Now I think what I'll do is put this shade right here called Virgo in my inner corners. Why not? I mean, if we're going to do an 80s look, let's go all in, baby. Scratch and sniff stickers. I had a ton of scratch and sniff stickers. I had sticker books that I would put all my stickers in. That was so fun. God, I missed that. Uh, I tried to do that for my kids, but they just really weren't feeling it. They were like, I don't really need a sticker book, Mom. I'm like, come on. But they just weren't into it. And again, we would trade those two at school. Uh, members only jacket. I did have kind of like a maroon burgundy um, members only jacket. Man, I love that. That was such a great jacket. I thought it was so cool. It had like those snap things on the shoulders and like pockets in an inner pocket. And oh, yeah, I thought I was just amazing with that jacket on. Uh, a mullet. I did have a mullet and I will pop a picture up of my mullet that I had in, I think that was eighth grade. Not proud of that mullet, but yes, I did have one. Uh, oh, everybody had one pretty much back in the eighties was a mullet. I did end up growing my sides of my hair out. I think I was what, a freshman in high school when I started doing that. It took years and it looked awful the entire time. My hair was a mess in high school. Neon clothes. Oh yeah, I had a ton of neon clothes. I had like bright green, bright orange, uh, bright pink, bright yellow. I actually had a pair of like painter's pants. Well, they were like cloth, white cloth pants and it had like, uh, looked like it had like paint splatters all over them. <laughs> they were actually like in the material uh, that were all different neon colors. Those were amazing. Holy jeans. Yes, I did have holy jeans. I had my piranha pants. That was when I was in eighth grade, ninth grade, ninth grade. So 1989, loved my holy pants. Uh, I used to have to wear long johns underneath of them. They were so holy. They didn't just have the holes in the knees. They were all over the pants. It was great. Uh, Atari. I did not have an Atari. My mom would not let me have uh, game systems when I was growing up. She just felt like they were going to rot my brain. However, she did buy my kids game systems like PlayStation and Xbox. I'm like, oh, okay, I see how this works, mother. Slap bracelets. I did have slap bracelets. Those were really cool until, you know, like they would break because I would slap them and then I'd try to turn around and slap in the other direction because some of them, like some of the ones I had, you could only snap them in one direction. And I try it the other way and I break them. That was great. Uh, big League Chew Gum. Those big pouches with those like shredded pieces of bubble gum. Man, we would just load our mouths up with that gum. I love that. My mom used to get so irritated. She's like, you, you don't need to have that much gum in your mouth. You're going to choke. Swatch Watch. I did have Swatch. I had one Swatch Watch and then I had a bunch of Swatch Watch guards. Like you put this little rubber guard over your watch, the face of your watch. Ah, uh, those were so cool. And I actually had uh, rugby shirts. Rugby shirts were really popular uh, that were Swatch brand. I thought that was really neat. Uh, and then the last one here, leg warmers. I did have a couple of pairs of leg warmers. I had rainbow and then I had purple and pink striped leg warmers. Ah, amazing. This was so fun to answer these questions. So I'm going to go off camera, do my finishing touches, put the rest of my face makeup on, do my hair, and I will come right back. So this is the finished 80s look. And I definitely think that this look says 80s. Absolutely. It's very similar to looks I did back in the 80s. Although I didn't really blend my eyeshadows out much then. I used those spongy applicators, which I should have done that today. I can't believe I didn't think of that until just now. Pia sent me a bunch of those spongy applicators to help me uh, apply my super shock shadows because I was having a real tough time with that. 
Uh, I don't know. I just didn't think about it. So let's look at the palette again. This is the Pinky Rose Cosmetics 80s Baby Palette that Andy sent to me for us to use on our collab today. And I really do like this palette. My favorite shade is this shade right here that I, that I use today anyway. Uh, Dreamer. It's beautiful. Very dynamic, beautiful blue shade. And I really like this one too, uh, the shimmer that I put in my inner corners. Very nice. Uh, there is some transfer of this shade up into my transition area because I have kind of hooded eyes, so it looks a little strange if you get close to me. <laughs> uh, these two shades right here I thought worked very well. Maybe not the, the best mattes I've ever used, but they were pigmented and they blended out pretty decently. The blend of this eye look is not my favorite, uh, part partially because I was spending a lot of time answering questions and not really paying attention to how I was blending them, but you know, whatever. And then this shade right here, I, I do like this black matte, but it's maybe not my favorite black matte I've ever used. And this eye totally blew up on me. And it's not the shadow's fault, and I'll tell you what happened here in just a minute. But uh, really happy that Andy sent me this palette and really excited to use it again. Uh, you know, I, I might have to create another 80s inspired look with this bad boy. I mean, it's perfect for that. So let me show you a few other things I used for my finished look. On my lips, I do have a combination of two liquid lipsticks. I have this one from Ofra. This is the Flexi Stick in Velour. This is from Lime Crime. This is in the shade number 18, I think. That's what's on the bottom. That's all I can see anyway. And Steph sent both of these to me, and I love these liquid lipsticks. My goal was to try to recreate the purple Wet n Wild lipstick shade. I don't think I got there. That's a very unique shade of purple, and I don't really have anything in my collection that would really match that, but I, I tried. And uh, I, I do like how it looks, just not exactly the shade I wanted, but you know, whatever. Uh, for my upper lid liner, I did use the Rimmel Scandalize Precision Micro Eyeliner in Black. And I poke myself in the eye, this eye, with this eyeliner today. And that's why this got pretty murky. I did my best to try to salvage it, but I don't know. And I haven't done that to myself in so long. I don't know what happened. Like, I just started putting, bringing the eyeliner to my eye, and my eye just spazzed out. So it took me a little while to get that to calm down and get it out of my eye. But uh, normally, this works really well. It's not the eyeliner's fault. It's my fault. My eye just spazzed out. But really nice, affordable uh, felt tip liner here. And then for my mascara, I did use the Nobu Carmetics Nobu Lash Mascara that I got sent in some PR. And I'm almost to my week of use of this. Uh, I think tomorrow will be my week. And then I will do a review video and let you know what I think of this mascara. But spoiler alert, I just love it. It's amazing. And uh, this was so fun to do with Andy. Thoroughly enjoy collabing with her and doing the movies uh, collab, the 80s music, 90s music, and now doing the 80s pop culture collab. So much fun. And like I said at the very beginning, I'll have her channel and her video linked in my description box. Go check out her video and listen to her answers. I cannot wait to watch her video and see how many answers we have uh, that, that match each other or are similar to each other. It's, it's really uncanny when we do these collabs. We have so many similar answers to one another. You know, we both grew up in the 80s and 90s, and so we have a very deep affection for 80s and 90s everything, you know, music, movies, pop culture. Uh, if you guys would like to do this on your channel, if you have a channel and you want to do this video, uh, answer these questions, I will have all the questions listed in my description box. And there's a lot of questions, I realize. And you can do it in whatever format you want. You don't have to create an 80s eye look if you don't want to, if you want to do it like as a Mask Monday or just sit down and answer the questions, whatever. But make sure if you do do this, on your channel that you tag Andy and I so that we can go and watch your videos and hear your answers. Uh, I just love Andy so much. I'm so proud of her and so happy for her for all of her success here on this platform. And I just want to continue to watch her grow and blossom. And I really look forward to our next collab. I don't know, maybe we'll keep this going. I don't know. We haven't really talked about doing that again, doing this again, but maybe we will. Uh, I'm sure we'll collab together again at some point. But uh, if you guys are interested in us keeping these types of videos going, uh, like different 80s, 90s type questions or uh, pop culture type questions, answers, whatever, let us know because uh, we've gotten a lot of really positive feedback from doing these collabs together. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your lives to sit down and watch this video. If you're new here and you enjoyed what you saw, please consider subscribing, smash that like button, and of course, comment down below in the comment section because I love to chat with you guys there. And if you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. I cannot wait to see you guys again on my next video. But in the meantime, take very good care of yourself. Be well, safe, happy, and I will see you soon. Bye. Drop it.